Where would you like to start here? So look, the, uh, the president is going to articulate tonight the differences between him and the Republicans and the idea that uh, there is uh, there are problems here between the haves and the have-nots, and one of the areas in which he will talk a bit about, and one that highlights that I think, are taxes. And so if you take a quick look at the various tax plans that are coming forward, we know that President Obama is on, uh, is on record as favoring a repeal of the Bush tax cuts for the highest income earners. These are the, this is the top two, maybe 3% of people whose tax rates would go from 35 to 39.6%. Those are people making over 200000 or 250000 Roughly 250 for a household, 200 for an individual. Okay. Romney would maintain the Bush tax cuts exactly as they are. Gingrich would give people this choice between the Bush tax cuts and a flat tax. And in a minute, I'll show you what the actual dollar impact of all this is. But you see three very different visions of taxes here. The same is true on... Uh, capital gains and uh, dividends, which is the source of most of, Ro of Romney's income, of course. Obama so, would like to raise it from 15 to 20 percent. Mm. Romney would like, as he said last night in the debate, to eliminate it for people ma making less than 200,000. Does, does, it, does it state 15 percent for 200,000 and above for, with Romney? Correct. Okay. And Gingrich, incredibly, would like to eliminate it altogether, which, as the point was made last night, would eliminate. Uh, Romney's taxes. So, I mean, Mitt Romney would be paying 0% instead of 15%. 0% instead of 15 Now, if you look at a couple of other things, the famous carried interest that certain private equity and some hedge fund guys get, Obama would like to tax it at ordinary rates. That would be the 39.6 after the Bush tax cuts expire. Romney would like to maintain the current 15%. And Gingrich would like to eliminate it again altogether, so those guys would pay no tax. And then finally, on the estate tax, the so-called death tax that people talk about, Obama would like to, Obama would like to go back to uh, the 2009 levels, which is what, which is about 35 percent, 45 percent on uh, over three and a half million dollar estate. And, and and what is it now? Uh, now it's in the process of being eliminated, actually. Um, it's, there's a $5 million, now it's 35%, excuse me, a $5 million exclusion of $35 million. But let me go to this last chart, because these last two charts, because it sums it up pretty well. So if you take the totality of these proposals, in 2015, just to take a year when it's all in effect, yeah. Obama would increase for the top 1%, uh, the famous 1%, Obama would increase their taxes by, uh, by 87000 um, Romney down by 82,000 and Gingrich down by 340,000. And if you go to the very last chart and you see what this does to federal wow. revenues, Obama would increase them by 154 billion, Romney would cut them by 180 billion, and Gingrich would cut revenues by 850 billion dollars <laughs> a year, which would pay for your Part D Medicare and then some. Seven years. Wow. John Heilman, uh, how. how how much do people pay attention to this on the campaign? I know the, obviously the Wall Street Journal editorial page, a lot of other conservative activists pay close attention to this. On the campaign trail, how much do they? Uh, in terms of the, the comparative tax yeah, plans? Yeah, how many people know that Newt Gingrich is eliminating the capital gains tax, the death tax, Mitt Romney is... I think not many. I, th I think I think that I think the notion that the two of them are they have not driven the, the 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 minor contrast between their tax plans that much. I think most conservative voters know that both of them would like to tax us less than uh, Barack Obama wants to. Yeah. And, and not do anything to pay for it. Yes. Really helpful. Yes.